you. How are you? How's everybody doing? Morning. Yeah, you're awake still? Good, because I'm excited to be here. I've never been to Bristol before, so thank you very much, Like Minds, for having me and Ali. Yeah, so today I want to just, you know, get a feel for who you guys are. How are you, sir? Have you ever uh, broken into your own home? <laughs> you have? Yeah. Awesome. And what was that like? Did you use a lockpick or did you break the window? How'd you do it? Oh, you are awesome. Give me, give me a nice handshake. That's awesome. What about you, sir? Have you ever broken into your own home? Yeah, similar, actually, although I was drunk and fell through. Oh, <laughs> that is good. That is a good story. Now, who here has ever used anybody else's password? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Did you, like, hack your boyfriend or something? No, no, no. What did you do? You just looked into, like, you used your mom's cell phone. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. You're one of those. Who, who, who here has used their password to, I don't know, like, hack your boyfriend's emails? Come on, I won't tell anybody. It's just us. I've never done anything like that. <laughs> yeah, you have? You're my kind of girl. What'd you do? Was he like getting in trouble and you had to like keep him in line? What, or were you just like curious? No, we just got married and he was having the press. Oh my God. <laughs> well, good for you for finding that out now. I'm sorry that it was after the wedding. All right, so that's a weird place to start the talk, but there you go. Um, here we are breaking into um, the houses and lock picking and, and, and using passwords. What about banks? Who here has ever robbed a bank? Come on. Come on, tell me. No, there you go. There you go. We got a few people. All right. I get you. I get you. So uh, <laughs> you guys back there. So, so here we are living in this world of cyber espionage, right? Where people are breaking into banks and doing all thing, kinds of naughty things on tour and, and doing things we don't want to talk about. What if I handed you, sir, right there with the cool mustache, a, an exploit that gets you into any computer in the world? You'd feel pretty cool, right? Probably walk around like this, yeah? And twiddle your mustache. Yeah, I know, yeah, that's a cool feeling. So when you get in, right, when you pick that lock, it's like the coolest, like, sweet victory rush that you get in when you finally break into something or you use your boyfriend's password and find out all the bad things. But it's that unique kind of forbidden interest that makes people kind of go crazy. I know because I started this cybersecurity thing a few years ago and I've since got a few letters behind my name and, feel like, and I still feel like a superhuman, uh, I, I have superhuman powers. And that's the, that's the kind of thing that when I go around and I meet other people that have these same powers, I'm like, you, me, let's kind of go over here and do some cool stuff. Let's see what happens, yeah? And it was a few years ago, how do I use this? This one? This one, ah, there we go. It was a few years ago that I noticed there was this huge massive gap between law enforcement and the people with those superhuman powers that I talked about and industry. And this industry that was like all of 15 years old, yes, we came in 2001. We are part of the infosec industry that knew everything, right? And hackers, when I say hackers, what does that mean to you guys? Do you shudder and think about kids in their basement with the, like, the, the, the hoodies and eat a bunch of pizza pockets and Mountain Dew, yeah? Is that what it, or do you think of like the creepy crawler guy like far away somewhere in the basement, you know, stealing credit cards, yeah? So this, this kind of concept, this word was just thrown around with all kind of mischievous uh, assumptions around it. So for today, just right now, I invite you to think a little bit differently. And I want to take you on this journey that I've had in this cybersecurity sp uh, sphere for the last few years. When I showed up off the boat from the wonderful land of California, and I started running these events here and ran a spe uh, specific event, Legislating LulzSec, where I realized, wait a minute, this InfoSec thing, doing the same thing over and over again, exactly the way you're told and not asking questions, well, this actually isn't working because look what's happening. Everybody's getting connected, all your devices, your one computer with 65,535 ports is then connected to your one laptop, uh, your uh, smartphone and your PC tablet, and then your microwave and the brakes of your car and your refrigerator. And I get a bunch of people that say, wait a minute, no one cares about my microwave. You're right, they don't. But your one microwave attached to 10,000 other microwaves makes a pretty interesting distributed denial of service attack. And so now you start thinking, wait a minute, well, this port-driven society that we all live in is now changing into this personal telecoms company or, where everybody walks around. You are your own Rod Banner, your own personal telecoms company, and you are your own telecoms company. This, this kind of inflated notion of vulnerability is way too much. And now you're telling me that attackers stay inside my system over 200 days, and I'm supposed to, what, like go buy another piece of software? 
Do I get another IDS system or an IPS system? Or wait a minute, how, who here has ever been ransomed? Do you know what malware is? Have you ever gotten that little 16 digit love note that says you've got five hours to pay or else? You got that, sir? Yeah, and I mean, like, this is a big problem with my clients. Like, whose fault is it? Is it the company, the facility management company that you pay to rent the space? Is it the network security people, the people that you get the Wi-Fi from? How, who, how did they break in to uh, your... They had one of their passwords, it's password one. Yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> password <laughs> one, ladies and gentlemen. So here we are in this space where all these attacks are happening, and we're supposed to sit in fear because of all the malware and ransomware and the next system. So if I go get an encrypted USB, should I be safe then? If I move all my servers and back them up, and then if I pay the guy, am I then, how do I know for sure that I don't, I'm not going to be backdoored? Right? So these are the kind of questions when I'm sitting there walking through the security space, this infosec industry, I'm like, wait a minute, that's a problem, that's a problem. Wait, well, who's doing that? I mean, these huge gaps. Meanwhile, right, we've got these guys who are continuously being hacked, and the average Joe doesn't understand the first thing about port scanning. Yet we all sit there cringing at the word hacker. So I'm like, well, if everybody's getting all upset about the word hacker, let's just change it. Let's raise it to the negative one power, which for all my math geeks, inverts its meaning. So it goes from criminal to critical. And let's actually look at this term hacker and what these kids can do. Because the guys I work with actually get more of a kick just getting the chase, actually finding bugs, finding exploits, and reporting them legally. Because now they're working in an age where they can actually be rewarded and make mega bucks doing things the right way. So where's the incentive to break the law? And why do we have to continue to equate hacking with cyber criminals that steal our credit cards? When actually most of the people I know that are like this are obsessed with data and knowledge. And so hacking really means the pursuit of knowledge. And here we are in this mega storm, this storm of missing skills and kids being on the streets and going to jail for lifetimes of making silly, silly mistakes. And we're not actually doing anything different. In fact, Albert Einstein defines the definition of crazy as doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different response. There's the InfoSec community for you. You can imagine how well liked I am when I go to those events. Because I'm the one sitting there going, wait a minute, there's something to this kid that broke the law when he was 16, and now he's 20, and he has his whole life in front of him, and he made a cognitive choice to be better, to use his skills in a different way. And this is where I sit there and I'm like, wait a minute, what can I do to change this? So I started a company, Hacker House. <laughs> um, we started back in February. I also speak on, or I'm an advisor on uh, Founders for Schools, and I speak on many different boards in the Valley, including Hackers and Founders, where I started going into the schools and teaching kids, and I started teaching my cousins, um, actually, uh, uh, how to hack. They begged me, Jen, please, please teach us how to hack. I swear to God, anything else, I will do anything you want, just teach me how to hack. All right. So I sit them down, and I teach them how to connect their devices. This machine talks to this machine, and this machine can sing to this machine. And they loved it, right? And then somehow we get into this YouTube scan search where they see on YouTube how to hack your school VPN. <laughs> you can imagine the begging that started. Please, Jen, please, I'll do anything. You know, and I'm like, all right, all right, let's do it. Click on the button. Wait a minute, let me ask you a question. Would you go to your school at nighttime? And the five-year-old sitting on my lap looks up to me and she's like, no, the lights are off. <laughs> and I love that because I'm like, yeah, that's right, lights are off, what else? And the eight-year-old around the corner, he was like, you know, the doors are locked. Fair enough, good, smart kid. What else? There's a big window. There's a big brick. I'm going to throw that brick through that window. Now I'm in. Let's go. And the 11-year-old goes, wait a minute, that's against the rules. I'm like, huh. So I thought you said that when you break... <laughs> Well, how is it any different to go in at nighttime than to hack your school VPN when no one's looking? Oh, TikTok. Yeah? Suddenly, this whole like eight year olds don't have any reverence for law enforcement starts to uh, diminish when you walk them through and you actually sit down and you talk to them. And the way I sit there is like, yeah, there's a lot of kids on this side of the fence right now because they don't understand what they're doing is actually against the law. 
You know, you have to break it, break it down for them. The way we legislate kids behind a wheel of a car, and, we, and then we act surprised when they get into sites and websites they're not supposed to be. We could actually turn this and channel this energy on this side of the law and do a lot more good. Because I swear to you on my life, if there's one thing I've learned in the last few years, is that the next piece of innovation is not going to come from some big corporate consulting polished security firm. It won't come from the big uh, accounting firms, the big four. You all know them. I don't need to name them. Because I've been around. They all love doing the same thing over and over again. Actually, no. The real difference here is going to come from the 17-year-old in his basement, the 18-year-olds, the kids that come to my hacker house and hang out and they build really cool pieces of tech. Those are the kids that we gotta be careful. You know, these are the ones that didn't actually know how to get a job in government, that will never actually be able to be hired and work in corporate life. And I kind of dabbled in corporate life for like 30 seconds when I first came <laughs> over here, and I realized real quickly there's no way I'm going to do well there. So let alone some kid with Asperger's or autism or any kind of you know, dis disability that we call spectrum, right? And we wonder and we act surprised why these same kids are able to understand things in different ways that we don't understand them. Case in point, one of my girlfriends had an 11-year-old son, uh, well, she still does, back in Palo Alto. And we were there. Uh, and I came home. And he comes in the, and then in the kitchen. He throws down his books. And he's like, you know what? Girls' passwords are really shorter than boy passwords. And I was like, oh, how do you know that? And he walks me through the story, how he gained admi access rights uh, into his system and moved unilaterally between his uh, teachers, faculty, parents, and students. And mom's like, oh my god, that's illegal, gets on the phone, start planning to call everybody. And I'm like, right, walk me through how you did it, first step. <laughs> you know, Because I'm like, this kid's a genius. Don't throw him in jail. This is, a, this is the kind of stuff that I, how did you do that again? Wait, do, if I do this, if I reconfigure the system, you know, this is the kind of stuff where I, I sit in awe. You know, he's 11. What is he going to be doing when he's 12, 13? We think about this. So I often get a lot of crap about working with borderline criminals or kids that, I don't know, uh, those, are, those are some odd ones, aren't they? You know, I get a lot of this kind of stuff. And they say, what actually happens at Hacker House? Do you guys break the law and do things? And I, and I sit there and I'm like, what are they? I can only imagine what everybody assumes we do. Because it is such a random thing to say, yeah, we've got a big house with a bunch of hackers. And we actually go sit and talk to space. That's right, I've taught them all and I've learned how to send packets out to space. We make antennas in the backyard out of old pipelines and old circuitry that we've pieced together. One thing that they always ask me has, when you want to get into hacking, uh, where's the best place to start? Most people will tell you to learn a good scripting language like a piece, you know, PHP or Python. I'm going to tell you to go build your own computer. That's what I had to do. You know, you learn how to pick up a, a Raspberry Pi and connect it to another network that talks to another computer, and you learn how things work and operate, because this, fundamentally, is the next thread of cyber warfare. Understanding drones. Everyone thinks I'm crazy for actively teaching quadcom computing and aerial navigation. Well, this is just breaking the law all kinds of ways. Wait a minute. These devices are actually being used more and more by law enforcement, scaffolding and contracting positions, search and rescue. There's nothing wrong with 3D printing and building and flying your own drones. We do it at Hacker House. Come join us. The next thing we do is we, talk, we play with wireless technology, so SDR, radio frequencies. You know, anybody that understands the basics of where the internet came from and, inter and, and you know, internet chat relays and instant messages will understand that radio is a big, a big baseline to all of this and actually for the next set of generation of hacking will continuously be based around radio, radio technology. It's amazing how much of this is seen as sinister. In fact, the best way to make kids love Shakespeare, make it forbidden. So I, I, I'll teach a Shakespeare course too at the next Hacker House. But this is what we've, we've kind of put together, this concept. I went up in, to the north this year. I actually learned how wonderful the top part of this country can be outside Manchester. And I got some of the best, UK's best talent, because that's where they all are. And um, they all come out of the woodwork to put together these training courses. And so I've been the, the forefront on a lot of the stuff that you've seen. Hopefully now that we release some of our uh, security training, you'll see more of them come out and actually get hands on. But they're mega leaders of the ethical hacking training. So you want to learn how to hack, hardware engineering, Internet of Things. I mean, if you, wanna, if you think that connecting your, all your devices to the same network that all your encrypted personal stuff should be is, uh, well, We'll show you really quick how you can break into all of it. 
And this is what we do at Hacker House. And my aim is to channel the way this energy and the skills uh, can be better used and implemented because the truth is they're not all out to just steal your credit cards. And a lot of these kids just actually want a place to be validated and to show their skills. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm done being crazy. Thank you very much. <laughs>